Suspense. Your host tonight is Autolite, maker of the sensational wide gap Autolite resistor spark plug and the dependable Autolite stay full battery. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks, bumpers and hubcaps, radiator grills and ornaments bullseye seal beam headlights, ignition systems, spark plugs, batteries, fuel pumps, windshield wipers, instruments and gauges, wire and battery cable, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Keith strip, the one my husband draws. Everybody knows that I was the original model for the girl Juliet. You know the one that's about to be murdered? But no one. There is no one except you and I. And the murderer, of course, knows that tonight my death is planned too. You don't believe me? You think perhaps that living with a comic strip artist is giving me an overacted imagination? Mrs. Stetson, I'm here to find out the facts and to see that you're protected. That's a polite way of saying that you don't believe me. No. No, I wouldn't well, say I that. I don't wonder. But if you had lived in the world of Buzz O'Keefe as I have, you wouldn't be surprised at anything. For nine years I've lived with this comic strip. One bloody tale, one gory episode after another. Until I could scream at the sight of a, of a drawing board or a newspaper. I'm sick of it. But I'm frightened, too. <laughs> Mark's murders are so messy. His fans love blood and pistol shots and poison and then spike doors and charred bones. And acid. To them, it's just something in a newspaper. To me, it's real. Look here, Mrs. Stetson. You'd better give me the facts about all this. It's uh, pretty close to 11 now, and if you really think your life is in danger... Oh, but it is. I'll tell you the whole story. I mentioned to you, didn't I, that I was the original model for Juliet? Mm -hmm. Well, my husband has begun to act as if I were Juliet. Juliet has to die because Mark's fans demand another gory murder. And I have to die because... Well, I think I'd better tell you first about John Slater. John and Mark are business associates in the Buzz O'Keefe Street. I well remember the night Buzz O'Keefe was born, nine years ago, on our first wedding in the Having fun. Oh, darling. Well, we shouldn't have come here. It's much too expensive. 
Say, by the way, before John comes back, I wanted to ask how you like him. Oh, I like him. And I think he's giving you some very good advice. It's a shame that anyone as talented as you should go on like this, never getting an opportunity to show what he could do. No, no, no. You're much too lovely to be talking about business. Oh, I see. I should have stayed out a little longer. Julia, this is for you. One year married, one flower. Oh, thank you, John. Where is that waiter? I ordered fresh drinks half an hour ago. Never mind the drinks. We've got some very serious conversation to finish. Namely, how Mark Stetson can make a lot of money. Or just a little money. We don't have expensive taste. Well, we might as well make a lot of money while we're about it. Now, how about my newspaper idea? You know, comics just make a pile of dough once they catch on. Oh, we tried that. But they don't seem to like Mark's sense of humor. Well, forget the humor. Let's get up a good blood chiller. What a detective, maybe. A guy who's always getting in tough spots and getting out of them again. Crime. Bloodier the better. Huh? Well, I say crime doesn't pay. Maybe it does in comic strips. I don't know if I could. Well, I'll see that he does, John, if I have to stand over him with a clock. <laughs> oh, what a girl. Now, let's see about our detective. Let's give him a good Irish name. Now, what'll it be? Uh, O'Brien uh, O'Keefe? Uh -uh. I'll take O'Keefe. I had a dentist once named O'Brien. Uh. Oh, what about calling him Buzz, huh? Kind of a busy-sounding name. Buzz O'Keefe, yeah. Yeah, Buzz O'Keefe is wonderful. Now we can have those drinks. Waiter? Yes, sir. Waiter? We'd like to order a very choice bottle of champagne. We're drinking a toast to Buzz O'Keefe. You don't know who he is now, but you will. You'll know him soon enough. Look at that. Oh, I always read Buzz O'Keefe. Something in the way they draw Buzz that reminds me of my eldest son. You know, the one with station at Manila. Oh, I wouldn't even buy that if it weren't for Buzz O'Keefe. Jeez, look at old Buzz today. He and Doris are really in a jam. They're locked in a cellar and it's all filling up with mustard gas. What a guy. I wish I could do stuff like that. Hey, hey, get him, Bitty, will you? Hey, yeah, 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 boss. Yeah, sure. That's the key. Very interesting. Cheap and sensational, of course. Very bad psychologically, but uh, interesting. Very interesting. Clean these up for me, Francie, will you? Yes, Mr. Shetty. Right about in there, little one. Huh? That's well packed. Well, that takes me through next week. Oh, that's good, darling. Then you could have a little relaxation. Uh, Tell you what. Let's go out to dinner tonight and maybe a show. Ah, no such luck. I've got to figure out what to do with Buzz. Right now, he's 50 stories up in the air, hanging by one slim rope with concrete head preparing to wield a villainous knife. For once, just for once, couldn't we think of ourselves and not about Buzz O'Keefe and Concrete Head? I know it's hard on you, darling. Well, never mind. Oh, but I do, I do. There's no reason why you shouldn't get some fun out of life. Well, how can I, with you working so hard? Francie, take my advice, never marry an artist. Well, I'm hoping to be one myself someday, Mrs. Hutchins. Well, in that case, when you get married, I shall warn your husband in advance. Yeah. Oh, John. Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, we, we can't go. Well, that is, I can't. But there's no reason why Julia shouldn't. Oh, no, Mark, I don't want to go out without Maybe you. Maybe I can meet you later for dinner. Uh, uh, John, she says she'd be delighted to go. Uh-huh. You can call by in half an hour. Goodbye. Oh, Mark, I really don't want to go. Well, of course you do. Now you run along and get yourself ready. Francie and I have a lot of work to do. All right. Try and come, will you? Of course. Anything wrong, Mr. Stetson? Well, Francie, you know, there are times when I'd like to go out, too. <laughs> Have a little fun. I should think you would. Everybody feels that way. Maybe. But not everybody has a responsibility like mine. Some people can go out, amuse themselves, go to cocktail parties. And others have to stay home and work.
That was a mistake, Mr. Henley. Because after that, I started to go out with John Slater. It was all Mark's idea. I don't know what drove him to do it. Supreme egotism or, or some kind of twisted jealousy or... But I was sick of Buzz O'Keefe and what he was doing to my life. And I guess I was sick of Mark, too. Mrs. Stetson, uh, you feel all right? Yes, it's, it's just that my hay fever gets very bad at this time of the year. I see. Tell me, uh, what, uh, what did Slater think about all this? Oh, I don't know. I don't think he thought at all. But he was only human, and he was attracted to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what, uh, what about you? I fell in love with him, Mr. Henry. But at first, I didn't mean any harm. I just got used to meeting John, seeing him, places. Now, uh, don't rush us. We want to take plenty of time to enjoy these drinks. Oh, and uh, you might tell him to go just a little easy on the garlic. Yes. You know, last week, it was just a little bit too much. Yes, sir, I remember. All right. Cheers, my darling. Cheers. Cheers to us. You shouldn't have said that. I wasn't said with a great deal of conviction. Well, maybe it isn't, but I'm trying, John. I'm trying very hard. To do what? Hold on to Mark. Julia, there's nothing there. He's not a man. He's a drawing pencil with a brain behind it. Maybe not so much of a brain either. Darling, think of the many ideas we've given him, you and I. Well, maybe we have, but... He's welcome to them. He's welcome to anything he wants except me. Well, haven't I met you charming people somewhere before? <laughs> Looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? Only there were three places then. Now there are only two. Here, I'll finish this for you. You never were much of a drinker, I'll say that for you. Drinking is one vice you've escaped. Oh, I'd better shove off. A little later than I thought. That's very true, John, old boy, very true. It's much later than you think. Well, goodbye. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't... You didn't mean for me to come walking in, did you? No, of course not. But I couldn't help but knowing... I've been watching you all this time. Then why did you let it happen? Why did you throw us together? Oh, so it's my fault. Yes, yes, it is in a way. So you know what it's been these last few years, Ma. You haven't paid any attention to me or to anybody else except Buzz O'Keefe. So now poor Buzz is to blame for it all. Let's go. I suppose you'd like me to get rid of him. Let's go home, Ma. John was talking about that sale to McLean's, wasn't he? What? You mean you don't know that McLean features have made us an offer for Buzz O'Keefe? No, he didn't tell me. Well, they have, and he will. And it's a lot of money. John wants me to take it, but I don't. Because Buzz O'Keefe belongs to me. He's mine! Well, I don't care about that, Mark. All I know is that I've been terribly unhappy, and I, I don't think there's a chance for us anymore. Let's give up now, before, it, before we begin to hate each other. Why, I couldn't think of letting you go, Julia. You see, I may want to kill you. You've been drinking, Mark. I don't think you understood me. I said I can't think of letting you go because I may want to kill you. Shall we have a service now, sir? Why not? Excuse me, sir. Tell me. Yes, sir. Do you read Buzz O'Keefe? Well, yes, sir, I do every morning. Well, my wife and I are great Buzz O'Keefe fans, too. What do you say we take a look at today's strip? Eh? Yes? Well, it looks like that Fonsoul is getting some ideas with that acid, eh? What do you think? Uh, well, I think... Uh, well, I guess everybody knows Julia's going to get bumped off. Oh, really? Is that what all the Buzz O'Keefe fans are saying? Well, sure. We were talking about it in the kitchen just a little while ago. Were you now? Yeah. Well, what do they think? That Juliet ought to be bumped off, as you say? Well, sure. She deserves it, a dame like that. She deserves it. Is she? 
That's the verdict. And that's the way it'll have to be. In just a moment, we'll see the second act of this evening's suspense story, The Comic Strip Murder. Now, during this brief intermission, I have a little story for you about a World Series baseball player and a serious problem that he was having with his car. It seems that driving over to the ballpark for a pregame warm-up, his auto was giving him such a hard time, it was really nerve-wracking and definitely upsetting to his winning car. <laughs> well, when I saw him bouncing along like that, I realized that what his car needed was a set of wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Yes, sir. You know, friends, Autolite is leading the field in this revolutionary new spark plug development. Yes, bulky, jumpy cars with faulty plugs just glide along when you install wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Now, the reason for this smoother performance is the famous wide spark gap. It took years of research to make this wide gap practical. And the secret of the wide spark gap setting is the revolutionary new 10,000 ohm resistor that's built into every Autolite resistor spark plug. Look at it. There it is. And it's worth remembering. And I want to tell you that this built-in Autolite resistor, exclusive with Autolite, is the first real advance in automotive-type spark plugs in many, many years. Yeah, that's true. Now, what does all that mean to you? Well, it means four big advantages. First of all, the minute you install Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car, you get smoother performance with leaner gas mixtures, when your car is idling or at low throttle speed. Naturally, because you're able to use a leaner gas mixture, you'll use less gas. Another thing, you'll find that Autolite resistor spark plugs actually check radio and television interference. Mm -hmm. And what's more, Autolite resistor spark plugs will give you over 200% longer life at the wide spark gap. Well, those are good reasons, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So why don't you take my advice and see your Autolite dealer tomorrow. Ask him to install a set of wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car. Well, as for our friend the baseball player, he was really delighted with the change in his car when we installed that set of wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs for him. Well, I knew he would be, because that's the way everybody feels about this wonderful new advance. Hey, what's this? For me? Well... What do you know? Two tickets for the opening game to the World Series. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, people certainly appreciate it when you tell them about a good product. So let me tell you again, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now here is the second act of the comic strip murder. That's how it is, Mr. Henley. My husband... My own husband plans to kill me as calmly as if he were planning to kill Juliet, the comic strip. And tomorrow morning, all those fools are going to buy a newspaper and read about the murder of Juliet in the comic strip. And I don't want them to turn the page and read about my death, too. Mrs. Stetson, why haven't you taken any steps to protect yourself? You're still here, living in the same apartment with your husband? Because I know that I am perfectly safe until tonight. I shan't die until Juliet dies, and Juliet is still alive, see? And even if I were to go somewhere else tonight, I don't want to live the rest of my life in fear. Listen to what happened a few days ago when I came to our apartment. Back, darling? Yes? Where have you been? Just out. With John? No. Yeah, come here and look. Something I want to show you. Oh, the background is Juliet's new apartment. Notice anything about it? Looks rather like our apartment. Well, of course, I've drawn it exactly like our apartment. And the terrace, too. I don't think I like the idea of our apartment in the paper. Well, don't be silly, darling. Why should I overwork my imagination when there's a perfectly good model to copy? Look, here's, here's the terrace, and here's our fish pond. 
Looks rather larger than ours. Oh, no. Did you ever measure out this problem? No. I did. It's five and a half feet long, two feet wide, and 18 inches deep. Really? Yes. You know, it struck me. Looks rather like a coffin, don't you think so? No. Looks just like a fish pond to me. Where's your imagination, darling? Well, I haven't any. You're the artist. You'll be glad to hear I've been hard at work getting a few days ahead. Oh, that's good. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased, you and John. Oh, I have several days of thrill, dear. A real treat for my idiotic public. Juliet's murder is finally accomplished. Oh? Yes. By a very ingenious method. And it would seem to me that the most awful thing that anybody could do to a woman like Juliet would be disfigurement. Something to change her from a beauty into something horrible. So you remember the acid? But in a strip, we discovered that it wasn't Von Sewell, after all, who sent the acid-filled wine bottles to Juliet. It was her husband. I didn't know Juliet had a husband. She didn't. I've had him appear suddenly from abroad. It looks a little like me, don't you think so? No, oh, I think you're much better looking. Only in your eyes, darling. Now, here's the beginning of the actual murder that will take about three days of strips. The husband is planning to stab Julia. I mean, Juliet. With a hypodermic needle. Now, I don't know exactly what's in the hypodermic, but we can assume that it's something to quiet it down so that he can proceed with the rest of his plan. And what is this plan? This figurement. We'll utilize the fish pond, you see. Acid poured into the fish pond. Very hard on the fish. Oh, where's Buzz? Oh, Buzz, he's been trapped by the hyena woman down at the bottom of an old well, so I don't think he'll ever be able to save Juliet. Now, this isn't finished, but I think it's going to be a real masterpiece. Here the husband tenderly kisses Juliet on the forehead before putting on his white gloves. You see? And then he gently lowers her into the acid-filled fish pond, and she can't move a finger to stop him. Mr. Stetson? Yes? The boy from the newspaper is here. He'd like to have as much as he can, at least a strip for tomorrow morning. Right. Thank you very much. Now, this last panel here is really the best. In this strip, we see the husband calmly lighting a cigarette, a faint smile on his lips as he watches what is happening in the fish pond. Of course, we can't actually show that. There's a limit to even what my bloodthirsty public will take, but we can't imagine it, can't we? We can imagine what's happening in the fish pond. We can imagine. It's not going to be Von Sewell after all. It's the husband. It's Juliet's husband. He's the one she'd better be careful about. You know, it was kind of like that when my youngest son came back from the Navy, and he found his wife. Yeah, Julia, she's sure in a spot. She's going to get hers pretty soon now. Yeah, it serves her right. Hey. Maybe I should have done something like that to, to Rita. Instead of letting her get away with it. Yeah, maybe I would have. Really frightful, this sort of thing. Cheap, disgusting, morbid, trashy, I think. <laughs> but after all, who am I to talk? I uh, keep reading it, don't I? Everything is ready, Mr. Henley. There's a large tin of acid. On the terrace, behind the plants here, I'll show you. Not now, Mrs. Stetson. I'll do back any minute. Oh, Mr. Henry, I'm so terrified. Then maybe you'd better go to a hotel for tonight, huh? No. No, I want you to see that everything I told you is true, that he plans to kill me in this grotesque way. Hello? Oh, it's for you, Mr. Henry. Oh, thanks. Yes? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Your husband's on his way up. Oh. Now, don't be afraid. I'll be right here. Oh, Judy. I stopped off to do a little shopping. That's why I'm late. Flowers? Oh, this is just a sample. Remember that little man down at the end of the block? Well, I practically bought him out. I thought we should have flowers here tonight. Lots of flowers. This is a very special night. Why is it special? Surprise. 
Come and arrange the flowers, darling. But there's something we have to do first. Now, Julia, this isn't anything new. We've been over it all before. You should be past being frightened by now. Give me a run. No, no! Julia, you know it has to be done. It has no, to be done. No, no, you're trying to kill me. No! Give me that gun! <laughs> Julia, what's the matter with you? Have you lost your mind? You're crazy. Who are you? Detective Hanley. I'm sorry, Mr. Stetson. I didn't know there was a gun about. Mrs. Stetson? I arrest you for the attempted murder of your husband. What did you say? I arrest you for the attempted murder of your husband. No! I wouldn't do that, Mrs. Stetson. Tell me. Do you know what's in that? Why, hay fever injections. I always give them to Julia about this time of year. I think if we had it analyzed, we'd find that there's some sort of opiate something your wife put in there in place of the medicine. That's exactly what was happening to Juliet in the Buzzle Kid Strip. Right. And if you look behind those plants out on the terrace, I think you'll find a similar touch. The five-gallon tin of acid. Well, why would Julia do a thing like that? Your wife had plenty of reason, Mr. Stetson. She knew that you'd never give her a divorce to marry Slater. And you wouldn't consent to the proposed sale of the Buzzle Kid Strip, out of which they could have made a lot of money. So she arranged things very cleverly to make it appear that you had planned to commit this crazy murder. That's ridiculous. And the plot for that whole sequence about the murder of Juliet. Julia gave me that story. Right. And the best part of all was telling the story to me. If I had believed it, and if you had succeeded in killing him, it would have been a clear case of self-defense with me as a witness. What's that? Must be the surprise party. What surprise party? It's 12 o'clock, your wedding anniversary. Had you forgotten? Oh, was that what you, what you found out on the telephone? My man downstairs told me that the guests were arriving, but your husband had them detained until midnight. A man who's going to murder his wife doesn't arrange a surprise party for her to take place at the same hour as the murder. Very clever. Very clever. You know, Mark... Mr. Henley is a kind of elderly buzzle keep, huh? Only he made a mistake. Instead of, instead of saving Juliet, he saved the husband. Well, that's the end of this treatment, huh? I think we'd better go back the back way. Yes. Yes, I agree. Happy anniversary. Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment I'll tell you the name of our star for suspense next week. But first, here's a parade of some of the more than 400 automotive products manufactured by Autolite in its 28 plants from coast to coast. There are the horns and the windshield wipers. And the batteries, those Autolite stay full batteries, the batteries that need water only three times a year in normal car use. There comes the wire. And the battery cable. There are the Autolite starting motors, followed by the distributors and the generators. There are the gas gauges and, of course, the spark plug. Say, just look at that precision. They're ignition engineered Autolite resistor spark plugs. Millions now use Autolite resistor spark plugs, the spark plugs of today and the future. Try a set yourself. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. week, you'll see another gripping story of suspense starring Hume Cronin. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense every Thursday night on the radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>